to that space. Well, to sports, of course. Sports. I understand, but is there any other option on the table that would would serve another interest? I mean, obviously we put it there, but there's ambiguity around it. Is that just because there was a space and we needed to put something there? Because I don't remember from this process. No, it was always going to be either a baseball or a softball, softball field. Or mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Then that yes. answers my question. And, and just to point out the. The multi-use field below, which I think is important to keep the size it is, mm -hmm. that'll Absolutely. allow us to play lacrosse, field yeah. hockey, soccer. JV lacrosse, Sub field Marcy hockey, football. soccer, Practice. all here on this field. That's right. So and th this is an excellent facility to be able to add. And I like the idea right. of putting the netting on posts in the ground as opposed yes. to what we're doing now. Yeah. Right. I mean, most of, a so lot of the other schools have that in, and it's a huge benefit as opposed to having the sandbags on the... Yeah. on the post down there, yeah. so that'll, that'll be good. If, we do. If, I, if I could, Mr. Webster, to that point, I did, um, just, just for your information, um, I did communicate with Rob Usula today. He's the architect, one of the architects we work with on doing what are you about. I wanted to make sure that there was nothing in the design that would prohibit netting at this diamond facility, whether it be baseball, softball, whatever, whichever it is, that would prevent us from being able to do that. And he said there was not. So if we do, if it is determined that that needs to be done, there's nothing that's going to prohibit us from being able to install proper netting. Okay. Any other comments, questions? Oh, and that other space is the discus space up there, David? Yeah. That's right. Discus is like also. I point out that okay. that was the only sport that I played discus? when I was in high what? school. Discus. discus. Discus? I went to state championship. Nice. And put you on the uh, as a subcommittee, see? See, you don't ask questions about <laughs> things like that. Is that javelin also, or just do they don't do? Do they do javelin yeah, in they uh, Massachusetts? The yeah, they do it. They do it on the baseball. Field, on the baseball. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, That's not, they do it on the um, for the state tournament. We did it on the <coughs> outfield of varsity yeah. baseball field, but for a regular dual meet, they'll do it on the um, the multi-purpose field. That's right, you know, next to the. And shot put is down on the track, right? That it's, stays the, the same. The shot put area down there. Yeah, down front. Okay. Any other questions? Chairman, I'd make a motion to. Um, Approve. Or, I'm sorry. Make a motion to recommend that the uh, secondary school building project include a baseball field in that particular area instead of the softball field originally designed, or maybe just that it include a baseball field without. Now, do you want to make that contingent on the contingent the MSBA, 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 MSBA not objecting to right. it? I'll second it. Okay. Motion and a second. Any further questions? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for coming out Thanks. in the summer. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. <sighs> okay. Okay. Just baseball. Okay. Getting back on the agenda, we have uh, MSBA SSBC update. Yes. yes. Thank you. Um, the last SSBC meeting took place on Tuesday, June 22nd, um, and Mr. Venezia was there, so when he has a minute, he would be providing the update to what took place at that meeting. I specifically remember, that was a long time ago, <laughs> turning to Cliff. This is Cliff, I hope you pay attention to me. You're going to have to report on this. This is a quintessential pass the buck going on right here, I'll tell you right now. I, I did, I did, because he's very good that way. And, um, he's so accommodating. Yeah. I'm trying to think of Cliff. Help me out here. What, what are we talking about? There's, a, a, month there's ago. a line from Oklahoma that I remember quite well. <laughs> <laughs> and it's summer and we're running out of ice. Actually, there was discussion about moving the modulars, the progress, the okay. status of that. Um, <laughs> uh, and I and, think. And, and there was the, the discussion about the, the utilities and how, it, it just basically bringing us up to speed on, on all oh, of that. And, and there was some discussion over submission and payment of invoices. I think that was yes. the meeting. Right. There was a, another, to, another To try to issue. expedite the, uh, the process to Together make sure. Together we may actually come up with a full yeah. memory on it. To, to make sure that, um, you know, good. That, that the members of the uh, secondary school building committee who are supposed to be reviewing Surprise. the invoices are getting them in time to vote on them at the next meeting. Mm hmm I think we talked about that. Trying not to let our contractors get too far behind yeah. in there. Yeah. Well, I know the electricity Excellent. is going to be moved tomorrow. Our MLD right. will be here. Electricity is going to be down at this building most of the morning. That's correct, from 8 to 12. Right. Just for um, clarification, most of what's going on right now is the moving of the modulars right. at the middle school from one location to another location. That's I'm going to take you through that timeline in a moment. It's huge. But we are um, we're shutting down 
the central office and the middle school office tomorrow until 11. We're hoping that the changeover will not take the full four hours and staff will be coming in. Um, some of us will still be here meeting in the dark, but... Um, I thought you said there was no water also, Carl, when we were out there. It's also true. That's new No water, too. Oh, I yeah. don't have that information. Yeah, that's what the... Uh, when Carl and I were, were looking at the site today, he also said no water. Don't drink anything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> For how long? <laughs> same thing. Same timeline. Yeah. Okay, very good. <laughs> no coffee. Uh, okay, and there was also, thank you very much, there was also um, a special SSBC meeting on Thursday, June 28th to address concerns related to the removal of tennis courts. That I can report right. on. <laughs> yeah. um, we, we did have a meeting and a number of proponents uh, for the tennis courts came in, including I think people from the tennis boosters. You know, we talked about obviously whether or not there were any options other than closing the courts down. At that time, the courts were closed, the nets were removed, the gates were padlocked, etc. And, um, you know, we, we explained to, uh, to the people that were there that uh, it was absolutely necessary that this was now a construction site, uh, that I think that at that time there was a lot going on out here, so it wasn't very difficult to convince them of that. And uh, they were very accepting. We looked at different options. We talked about different options. John Bernard spoke about the possibility uh, of using the tennis courts at Ipswich River, about renting tennis courts up in, uh, over in Danvers, uh, indoor courts. Uh, about scheduling meets, potentially, uh, obviously, away meets for the period of time that we won't have the courts. Um, recreation, I think, was talking about potentially trying to put in another court at Ipswich River Park. So we didn't have a final so solution for them on this, uh, but I think John was working on it, and we'll have something relatively soon. We have until next spring to deal with this. But it is a loss. I mean, there were six beautiful courts up there. They were lighted. Recreation used them all summer long. Uh, tennis team, the public. So... It's difficult. I mean, you know, that was a project that we, we took great pride in. And um, and uh, I, I'll say this, the people that came in to, to talk about it were very, very uh, understanding. Well, I think, and the other thing is that the tennis program's grown significantly since we added those right. courts. They mentioned that. The numbers well. on both teams. <laughs> yep. Both teams made the state tournament this year. Yep. But unfortunately, it's, uh, you know, a situation that nobody can be up there. It's, it is an you active, it. it's an active yeah. construction yeah. zone. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty active. There's no just way. no way. As a well, on the on the plus side, the materials that were are in, in the in the cage around the courts, as well as the goals uh, or the net uh, arrangements, have been salvaged. Right. Uh, I think as well as the lights. So those are uh, available for use at another location. But the meeting went well. People were very understanding. They just want to be kept up to date and apprised mm -hmm. of what's going on. Well, I think once we um, you know once we determine a plan, once the athletic uh, director and the principal come to us and we figure out a plan hopefully we'll have that plan for three years so there'll be some stability right. until the new courts are in so they'll know where they're going to be um, the one thing I'm wondering is we're going to have to put some additional money in the athletic budget to cover we're going to have some way we're going to have to rent that, tennis courts that came up and if we have to rent them there's going to be some obviously some cost associated with I mean I don't think it's going to be astronomical <laughs> but it's going to be some cost yep. so we'll have, to, we'll have to figure that into the budget mm-hmm so. Mm -hmm. And um, Mr. Bowers has been attending the weekly pre-construction meetings. There was one today I did attend. I don't know if there's anything you want to report on past pre-construction meetings. Uh, unfortunately, I, I missed the last two because okay. of um, a, a construction project at home with the three <laughs> came through my house. <laughs> yeah, it's a real kind of Yeah, his own. Was good. Right. He had a good meeting. Right. Somewhat of a distraction. Yes. I mean, <laughs> somewhat of a distraction. Uh, <laughs> so I, I haven't been to those. There's there has been some activity that's been reported in emails. However, uh, finding of uh, one of our force mains uh, broken uh, apparently yes. for an extended period, plugged. Um, We've been operating on one and not knowing that we've been operating on one, mm -hmm. uh, which might explain some of the difficulty we've had uh, right. in, in getting the wastewater out. Mm -hmm. So that's been found. Uh, I think the pipe was two feet below the surface, so uh, that's a little less than Three. it should yeah. have been in the first place. Uh, there was uh, issues finding the gas line in the wrong place. Um, uh, again, uh, another action to move that uh, to a different location uh, when you're when you're working underground no one knows what's there and where things actually were put mm -hmm. uh, sometimes things aren't put 
where they're supposed to be, and uh, that should not happen in the new project. Uh, in any event, that's what's what's going on. Those are uh, looks to me like uh, we're on target schedule-wise, but I don't want to cut into your. Nope, that's perfectly fine. Great segue, Mr. Bowers. They also talked today about relocating that forced main at the pre-construction meeting today. I was able to attend. They're also um, taking a look at cleaning uh, some of the brick in the interior hallway at the middle school to um, see if we can continue to use that brick because that would be part of um, Main Street. So they're testing a, a section of cleaning that brick and sealing it to see what it looks like. That, that's on the outside back of the build of this building. That's correct. I it's on the outside actually. back. I saw that. Up yes, um, an evacuation plan will be created um, by the building principal and assistant, um, the building principal and assistant principal and I, um, because we need to reroute students out of the school once the mods are in place. Um, so it's going to change. Uh, the evacuation plan will affect the mods, the library, and the second and fir first floor classrooms where the mods used to be. So what I've given you today um, is an update of the timeline from today uh, leading to the opening of school regarding the middle school modular relocation and site prep. So I just wanted to give you a sense of what um, this project will be doing and from now until September 5th. And on August 8th, it is anticipated that the relocation of the modular classrooms will be complete. By August 10th, the paving in the front of the school will be complete. By August 17th, all exterior walkways and stairs and anything that needs to take place outside of the relocation of the mods and the new paving will be complete and new signage will be installed. Um, during the week of August 20th to the 24th, um, Wayne and um, the custodians will conduct their final cleaning of the relocated modular classrooms. Inspections will be completed. Um, the movers will be here to move furniture back into the modular classrooms from where it's currently being stored in the cafeteria. And we will have um, a bus route test run with the new um, traffic pattern that will be at the front of the school. We thought it was real important to bring a bus in to make sure that they can make the turns as they will be laid out. <coughs> so, um, and we'll do that before the students arrive. It's and a good idea. Not a lot of space. <laughs> no, between not a lot of space. <laughs> Carl doesn't even know that yet. So we'll be talking, Carl. <laughs> Carl's the bus man. Um, and then during the week of August 27th to the 31st, teachers will be able to move their personal items back into the modular classrooms. Remember, we're talking about one grade level, not the entire school. And then our students will return on September 5th. And I was assured today that this will be the timeline, that they will stay to it because I was emphasizing the need to be ready for our students when they return. And they were very um, reassuring. So once the, this is all complete, and it's, it, it just shows um, the hassle that modular classrooms are in general. I mean, we're, we're, it's just taking two months to move eight or 10 modular classrooms because we don't have enough space in the school. And it looks like a major construction zone up here. It does. Well, there's some other work being Sounds done up right, front. Right, right. It is a part of the major Correct. construction. And Correct. You know, and as difficult as that is because of the time and the money that it costs to do it, I, I was checking on a project down in Burlington where in order to renovate the school with the kids still in it, they had to bring in a whole modular wow. village of classrooms yeah. and lease them or buy them so they could put the kids in there while they're working in the building. Wow. As, the, as the construction's going on. So yeah. there's a lot of different things that we should probably be grateful for that we don't have to move kids out of this building or compromise them like that while the construction's going on. Yeah. You know? So okay. this gets done September 5th, well, before that. Kids are back to school. Okay. Buses can make the turns, hopefully. Or if not, we'll have to get mini buses. Um, <laughs> then sometime in the Where's fall, the we can cost? expect <laughs> groundbreaking for the high school portion of the project. Groundbreaking is probably going to happen. I, I'm not the person setting right. it up. It's probably early October. So it will be in the fall sometime. That's and good. Uh, after the kids are back, they can participate. Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, the design development, I believe, is right around 50% uh, currently. Uh, the end of this month, the next couple of days, we should have results of the um, 
uh, the, the re-up of the construction estimate mm -hmm. based on the newest material.